But anyway, that uh, today we are starting a new series, uh, and in the whole theme of harvest, you know, we're 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 in that season and everything like that. I, I don't know. Let me just bear my soul to you all. It's going to be very hard for me to say. Uh, because I feel like we're going to have a church split after I say it. <laughs> I like summer better than fall. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I, I understand that I'm going to get emails later. And uh, you're all going to send me like uh, dead leaves to my house. <laughs> But no, I, <laughs> I, I enjoy summer. I, I love the idea of going out and being able to go play. And, and you know, when I was a kid, I loved going swimming a lot. I love going swimming now. And, and uh, But, you know, I'll, I'll tolerate fall because there's still a lot of fun things about it. You know, <coughs> we get to have the bonfires and we get to, to do all, of, you know, I get to see the crops being harvested. That's always a fun thing to see when you see the combines out and they're just collecting the corn or the soybeans or whatever it is. And just knowing that from farm to table, you know, you're provided for in that way. It's really fun. It's really fun to see that. Now, I had my very first job that I ever had was a job that lasted a total of one day. It was when I was 12 years old, um, so it was back 100 years ago, and it was uh, and it was corn detasseled. Uh, so, by the way, a uh, little known fact: corn detasseling as a job was actually created by the devil. <laughs> But that's a, that's a little fun thing. No, uh, I was a kid who enjoyed video games and enjoyed uh, TV shows and movies and all of those kind of things. And I was kind of more, let's say, built for leisure. <laughs> and, and instead of instead of uh, vigorous labor. So corn detasseling it. The first thing that they told us was, you know, you're going to be standing on this platform, and you all, if you've ever done this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and then as things go by, as the corn goes by, you just pull those tassels off. Easy stuff. I mean, it's just, I mean, when you're, when you're thinking about it, before, before you actually do it, you think, oh, this is going to be easy. You know, this is going to be really easy. Then at the end of the day, I thought to myself, you know, I don't feel like God is calling me to this line of work. <laughs> and uh, I really feel maybe that this might not be my area of expertise. So, um, the other people that I was working with, they went on further to pursue their life goals. But, um, not me. I, I, I decided to go in a more academic way, let's say. So anyway, so we're getting to this, this time of year where we're seeing all of that come before our eyes. We're seeing the tractors go by, and we're seeing the, uh, you know, the pollen being stirred up, amen? You know, like uh, we, a lot of people are having allergy situations and coming in with their coffees that are about this busy to work and eyes puffy and all of those kind of things. And, and when we think of harvest time, we often don't think about those things, but when we think of harvest time, we're thinking more about what, what goes into a crop from seed to, you know, eventually being harvested. So this month, I wanted to talk about the different aspects of harvesting or, you know, crop cultivation and all of that. But I wanted to relate that specifically to how God works in and through us. Because sometimes we don't, honestly, sometimes as Christians and sometimes as those who follow God, we, we just kind of think that, well, you know, as long as I'm good and I just treat people well, that should be good. Or maybe God came into our lives 30 years ago and we said, okay, well, that, that's good, I'm I'm just going to kind of ride this wave until it's all done. But God wants so much more from us. 
And he wants to do so much more through us. That if we would just allow him to work in us, through us, around us, beside us, then we will see our we will be blessing people everywhere we go. You know, we have we have this great um, family that came today with, you know, thanking us for our prayers. And I, once again, thank you for being here. If we were not a praying people, and if we did not pray to God we know we serve, or if we just kind of threw them up against the ceiling, like, well, Lord, I don't know if you can do anything, but here you go. There wouldn't be the same impact. Scripture tells us that the effectual prayers, uh, the fervent prayers of, a, of, of man, uh, you know, avail of much. I, I'm missing a word there. Righteous, Righteous man. There you go. Right. I, I should know that word. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. There you go. That, that's all. That's good. And we have to, if we are to get to that point in our lives, we have to be willing to step into this process of allowing God to grow us. You know? So, we're going to be going specifically through 1 John chapter 4 in the New Testament. And we're going to be looking at different areas of, okay, well, what does it mean um, for God to, to cultivate and to... Prepare our hearts. That, that's today. Preparing our hearts for what he has for us. So the next thing I want to say, so go ahead and if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to have it up here in just a minute. But, you know, First uh, John chapter 4. A lot of times when I ask people, hey, can you describe God? They'll say, oh, you know, he's great. He, he's great. He's, he's grace. He is grace. He is merciful. Loving when you say so. Amen. But if we actually were to say loving, did you know that that would actually be very lacking? We we know what loving means, right? You know, you get a hug from your best friend or your spouse, and and uh, you know they'll do anything for you that you ask. Loving, you know, our grandmother is loving. And um, our grandfather is loving. Sometimes loving meant discipline, you know. But when we think loving, we think of a person, we think of something that they're doing for us. But I'm telling you today that describing God as loving is actually lacking because not only is God loving, but God is love. Amen. He is the embodiment of love. <coughs> so, that's one thing. And we learn more about that in 1 John chapter 4. We learn more about what it means not only be loving, but be loved. Because if I'm loving, which I think that I might be, you know, I'm going to give you $20 so that you can get some gas. And if I'm loving, I am going to um, look, at, look at my bank account and say, well, just, just as long as it doesn't dip into what we need to buy groceries. You know, here's a little bit. That's loving, right? That, that really is kind of loving. Another love, yeah, you know, I have Friday off. I'll, I'll go ahead and babysit your children. That's pretty loving. Because that person could be, could be doing something else. They could be going to a party or a concert or something, but instead they're babysitting your children. Praise God, you know. That's loving. But not many of us, and I'm not saying we're bad people, but what I'm saying is not many of us would go all in. Every single thing that I have is yours. Not many of us would, uh, that person who God said turn the other cheek, would open up our front door and say have anything that you want. So I, want, I, I wanted to lay that foundation because I wanted to, to show you what the difference between loving and love is. And when we say God is love, this is what we're talking about. So we're going to start on 1 John chapter 4. It's going to be up on the screen if you didn't bring your Bibles or anything like that. 
We're going to start with verse 7. And this is John writing to early Christians. He's trying to help them to be on the same page to say, hey, there's a lot of false, false teachers back then. They were trying to get them to believe things that, that just were absolutely not true about God. So he said, okay, well, let's get down to basics. And really, what we're talking about here this month, we're just getting down to basics. It's always nice to get back to the fundamentals sometimes. Verse 7, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So then it goes on, and this is a little... Um, Side note here. And then it goes on to tell us, okay, if God is love, what does that look like practically? So let's go on. This is how God showed his love, love among us. He sent his one and only son to the world that we might have live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that God, he that he loved us. And sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. It's great, isn't it, just to learn about God and say, man, he's so great. You know, he loved, he's loving. He is mercy, He is grace. You know, and we're describing Him as, he, as if He is this remote being of far away that never interacts with us. But the problem is, when we step into this relationship with God, then He breaks off a piece of Himself and gives it to us. It's loving if I give you that $20 so that you can get, get back home. But that's not what, what the Bible is saying about God. Well, what we're seeing here is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Remember those girls that were here this morning? That he, in order to show love to the fullest extent, there was something that was required of him to uh, walk the walk. You know. So, so to say loving, it was like, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to send my son so we can help you move this weekend. But to be, but to be loved, he's going all in, and he's got a one-way ticket. Sure, he's coming back, but he's giving completely of himself. 100%. Nothing left on the table. So when we learn about who God is, when we learn about what it means to follow Him, when we really get deep into being more like Him, we realize that in order for us to step into this relationship, there is going to be everything required of us. You know, we, today in Sunday school we talked about, and I believe it's Luke chapter 18, where it's the parable of the persistent widow. This widow goes to the judge, and the, and the judge it describes this judge as someone who doesn't follow God, and doesn't care, and doesn't respect God, or, or fear God is what the actual translation says, nor does he um, really care what other people think. This persistent widow, they, she had someone do something to her. It's not specific, but it's something unjust. Let's say they stole something or something to that effect. We just make it up in our heads. It doesn't really matter what we put up on But this persistent widow came up to the judge and said, would you please do something about this? There is an injustice going on in my life and I need you to rectify that. The judge shoes her away every single time. Every single time. 
She keeps coming back. There is something unjust that has happened to me. Would you please fix it? Would you please maybe throw up in jail or, or make sure that justice is served? And the judge just says, just get away. You, know, you, you don't mean anything to me. Then finally, after so many times of, of coming to him, the judge says, fine. Just here, here's the solution. And the solution was given. Jesus used that as, a, as an example to talk about how God is not. Because God is not this judge who doesn't care about us. God is one who will immediately come to our rescue. Sometimes, and I say that, and that we can all raise our hands and say, well, what about that one time that I prayed and something didn't happen right whenever I wanted it to? The point is, is that even in those times, God is still growing us to receive the blessing. He wants us to be in a certain posture, a certain manner, a certain mindset, so that whenever we actually receive that blessing, we are just we're just ready to use that. And we're not ready, and we're not going to use that blessing to just kind of hoard and say, well, thanks, I'm just going to keep on to this, I'm just going to keep nursing this for the rest of my life. We are meant to then use that blessing to bless others. Although there are times where we don't look at that blessing as a blessing. Point being, are we always open to whatever he is sending our way? <coughs> not always comfortable, not always fun, but what are we doing with it? So, when we're going through this, this, uh, this month, this, today I want to talk a little bit about cultivating. <coughs> when we're in the, the mentality of a harvest, the first thing... A, a farmer does, and I'm not like an agriculturalist, so there's a lot more steps to farming than what I'm going to tell you this week, so don't be surprised, you know, but uh, I, I know that the first step is to go out to the land, a land that seems barren and that probably couldn't produce much, just flinging things on the ground. And the first thing the farmer does is cultivate <coughs> that soil. You've got to stir it up. You've got to get in there. You've got to get, you've got to get those, uh, those blades deep into the ground. You've got to pull up that soil. You've got to rotate it. You've got to make sure that everything is disrupted. <coughs> that soil, that it was flat and it doesn't seem like to have a lot of nutrients, what we find out is the nutrients are a little bit deeper than what we realize. The surface level looks dry, barren, nu nutrientless. But as we get deeper and turn it upside down, we realize that that's exactly where we need to plant. To the naked eye, that land would not bear any fruit whatsoever. Because I would go by there and go, well, you know, you can build something on top of it, but there's really nothing underneath. It's not until you get deep, you dig, you pull, you, you sweat, that's when we start to see the land that is worthy. But you can't see that just by looking at it. Through, in our lives, through whether it be discipline, whether it be very, very hard times where we go through, where we think of, Lord, I don't know where you are here. I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why this is in front of me. I don't know why you've dealt me these cards, so to speak. I don't know why this is going on in my life. But when you get, when you start to cultivate, when you allow God to cultivate and soften your heart, you realize that the nutrients are a little bit deeper. His grace and mercy and love it's just a little bit deeper under the surface. And when we allow ourselves to be cultivated, when he, when he prepares our hearts, when, we, when He prepares our hearts, we start to receive things that we didn't even know was there. Like what we thought was completely a, a curse to us is actually now a blessing. 
You've all heard my story about the time years ago where I went through this long period of time of unemployment. I'm going through this whole time thinking, God, why are you letting me go through this? What have I done wrong? And then now I can talk about it and say, to that person who just lost their job, and I can say, hey, let me tell you a story. Because even when, and during that time in my life, even when every week I thought, how are, you gonna, how are we gonna pay the bills? Because honestly, whenever, if you've never heard the story, when, when I was let go, we didn't even think we were gonna make it a week and a half. So week by week by week by week, money showed up out of nowhere. There was even one time where there was a knock at the door we opened it up and there was a $400 gift card, Visa gift card, sitting there. And to this day, we have no idea who put it there. Another time where the, the boss, and this is, this is a weird story itself, and you, and you, a lot of you heard the story, but I'm up here and you're not. So, um, <laughs> I never heard the story. Yeah, I never heard it. My boss who let me go. Two months later, brought me into her office and said, hey, I wanted to give you a gift, and it was a check. God is so good. Yes. Yes. And we say that, when we say God is good, we often say, well, just like, hey, yes, it did. But just as God is love, embodiment. Just as good, but not embodiment. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that, Jack. God is literally good. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> no, I'm glad you know what I got. It's good. It's not describing an attribute of him. It's describing who he is. Yes. I think that makes sense. Yes, okay. When we allow God to get deep into our hearts, deep into our lives, deep into our business, then he will make it so that we can be a blessing to others. We start producing. But you can't expect him to produce unless there's a little bit of tearing up going. A little bit of depth. A little bit of pain. I remember when I was younger going through the, I mean, you can tell of my stature, you know, I did a lot of growing. <laughs> the, uh, there were times in my life where I was in so much pain, and we've all been there. The growing part, remember that? Like our legs would hurt, our arms would hurt. Like I, I remember there were times where I had to pop Tylenol because I just could not stand the growing pain. Yes, I did have growing pains. <laughs> Despite what you see before you, I did have growing pains. I had, I also had, by the way, the, the, the thickest hair you could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. I mean, I look like a surfer, just you know. But moving on. But we cannot grow unless there is pain involved. We cannot grow unless there's discomfort involved. And we are going to be no help to anyone around us. We might as well just kind of hang it up, you know, clock out, unless we are willing to grow. So that's what this whole month is about. Every, we're going to be talking, and here's the interesting thing about this month that you might not catch on to unless I'm telling you, we're telling you now, is that Growth does not depend on us just sitting there. It depends on who God is and embracing Him in that. We allow Him to work in us because of who He is, not because of like how good I am at letting, letting Him work through me. That's what we do sometimes. So, are we allowing His love First part. Let, let, let scripture say what I can't. 
Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and known and has known and knows God. Mm -hmm. This word, um, the, the word love that I've talked about before, agapeo in the Greek, which literally means unconditional. It means that there is not, not God is not out there going, well, I do love you, but there are some things unconditional. Why else would he give himself completely? It's a big risk. But our part in this is if we are receiving His love, if we are receiving His mercy, if we are receiving His grace and forgiveness is found in verse 7. Easy. Dear friends, let us love God. <coughs> For love comes from God. You see, when we look at it, we are just simply the distributors of what He's dropping down to us. There is no part of Christianity, and Jesus has no part of this, that has anything to do with us receiving God's blessings and walking around going, hey, look at my blessings. Sure, there's testimony, hey, God has done so much in my life. But in no time, there's not one page in here that calls us to be arrogant about who we think we are now. We are only to boast. Only to boast in the cross, as Paul says. The symbol of death and dying and just torture. But, but it's actually a symbol for us. It's a symbol of sacrifice. And God is love. And God is good. And God is all given. So, cultivating, we're, we're learning this, this week, we're talking about this idea of, first of all, when, if God is love, if that is true, well, let's test this, let's push it to the end. If God is love, then what is that doing inside of us? How is that affecting us? Do we just say it as if it's just flippant and it just doesn't even matter? Like, hey, God is love. Oh, yeah, yeah thumbs up. That's our little code. Christian code like a secret handshake or whatever. God is love. Oh, of course. Oh, isn't that cute? But if we look through Scripture, we look through His story, we realize that God is love meant a lot more than us just, you know, smiling and sitting here on, and, and shaking each other's hands. God is love means a whole lot more than just making us feel good. Sometimes it brings us to some very uncomfortable realities about ourselves. And God is love, excellent. Man, this is so, we just love God. God is love. Wait, but that is true. We need to really take a look in the mirror, don't we? We're confronted. My fear is those who call themselves Christ followers are the ones in our culture who are not showing love. And that's not always true. There's a lot of people showing love. But there are some. And like I said in the past, that we can, we, we still are obligated to call them brothers and sisters. But let us not be those. Allow God to soften the soil. And what, what, when we say soften the soil in the context of harvesting, context of, of farming, we're, 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 we're saying that that soil is prepared to accept the seed. You know, it's ready. We're, we're ready to do this. And in the same way, our hearts need to be prepared to accept His nudging. His call. We need to be sensitive to what He has for us. 
We don't build this callus around our heart, this hard soil, and say, well, I, I got everything I need here. I'm just going to kind of stick to it. Uh, this life is about my preferences and my comfort and, and all of these kind of things. God, if God is good, then he'll make me comfortable at all times. Mm. Not really. Sometimes the act of serving someone else is going to discomfort and make us uncomfortable. You know. So let's get ready. Let's, let's prepare our heart. Let's allow that seed to get driven deep into where the nutrients are and allow him to do what, what he's called us to do. So, we're gonna, I'm going to call the praise team up. She kind of already got that clue. You know, uh, <coughs> we use this front of the stage as an altar. If you would like to come up with Neil, and you have some praying that you want to do, and you just want to and have some praise that you want to look up to God. Feel free to do so.